and Ignite presenter. Welcome Jill Rubenstein from Eagle County. never seem to feel that we are enough. I'm a perfect example. Trying to prove my value through my accomplishments led me to check myself into a mental health treatment center seven months and 27 days ago today. Why are so many of us feeling burnt out, stressed, and overwhelmed? Why do we tie our worth to our work? We all have value simply because we exist. Our students have value too, and until they believe it, we will see students in crisis. Since 1970, there have been over 100 school shootings. 95% of these attackers were current students, and of those, 71% said they felt bullied or persecuted. In 2014, over 1,000 kids were hospitalized by suicide attempts in Colorado. There were also over 95,000 disciplinary actions in our schools. Our students are showing us they don't have the skills to handle the stress they are experiencing. I'm thankful that the government is starting to set money aside for mental health. Unfortunately, not all of our students are receiving these supports. We need to advocate for ourselves and for our students. People who need help sometimes look a lot like people who don't. We all deserve universal and preventive mental health support. We need to think about all our students, not just the ones that are already showing signs of crisis. What percentage of our students or friends display their inability to handle anxiety or stress through anger, defiance, avoidance, or negativity? I'm hoping that these five minutes get you thinking about your own needs and convince you that you deserve the time and space to be gentle with yourself. Because just like our students, we deserve more. Here are seven research-based skills I believe we could all benefit from. One, focusing on the past leads to depression. Focusing on the future leads to anxiety. Staying in the present allows us to experience the here and now. Two, do one thing at a time. Notice the desire to be half present, to be somewhere else, or to go somewhere else in your mind. When you are walking, walk. When you are worrying, worry and when you are showering, shower. Three, approach your thoughts without judgment. Acknowledge your values, your wishes, and your emotional reactions, but don't judge them. When you find yourself judging, don't judge your judging. Four, emotions are often reactions to thoughts and interpretations of an event rather than the actual facts of an event. There is no such thing as a bad emotion and suppressing them does not make them go away. Please consider how dismissive this phrase is, especially when said to a child who is crying. You're okay. There's no right way to feel in any situation. Letting others know that you are feeling bad is not a weakness. Six, two things that seem like opposites can both be true. You can be independent and also want help. You can accept others as they are and still want them to change. Finally, what I think is the most difficult and important skill, radical acceptance. Understand that all behavior is caused and that you and everyone else is doing the best they can in any given moment. In review, stay in the present. Do one thing at a time. Drop judgmental self-statements. Allow yourself to experience your emotions and remind yourself that you and everyone else is doing the best they can. Think, even if a child has shown excellence in school, but can't manage their emotions or stress, none of that other stuff is really going to matter. Like me, when I hit my crisis point, I wasn't prepared. I believe in each of you and know you deserve to find joy in the small things. I'm going to leave you with a mindfulness practice designed to increase love and compassion, first for yourself and then for others. Slow your breathing, which I'm going to do. 
If you feel comfortable, close your eyes. And here is my message for you. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you find calm and joy in your life. May you wake up each morning knowing you are worthy. Thank you. Thank you.